Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Everyone, welcome to the pod, future podcast. Welcome back, guys. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening and joining us on this journey, our road to launch. Here we are, road to launch, man. Yeah. So we were just talking before about season two, we're kind of changing things up a little. Yeah. Uh, season one, you and uh, Tim uh, talked about the overall, I guess, vision of the church. Yeah, some of the foundational principles of the church. Yeah. Yeah. So like we talked about community, um, you know, theology, yep. grace, giving, generosity, all of that cool stuff. Yeah. And uh, season two, we're sort of changing gears a little bit where are we like documenting would you say uh, uh, the process in a way or the journey basically we want to take you guys with us on the journey of planning this church yeah and um it, basically you'll get to see some of the mistakes that we make some of the good things we're doing um and just really come on the journey with us yeah yeah so we'll be sharing that journey with you it's gonna be good uh so what are we talking about today luke I really want to talk about some of the behind the scenes of basically what it goes into a church plant, right? Because it's, it's maybe different than what some people expect. Yeah, okay. And so this is leading up to uh, public gatherings? Yeah. So when yep. we say uh, road to launch, what we really mean is uh, launching weekly Sunday gatherings. Yep. Now, of course, we know there's so much more that goes into a church than like a Sunday gathering. And yep. we talked about this in the book, You, Me, Us, The World. Uh, but... Once you start those Sunday gatherings weekly, like you can't go back. Yeah. <laughs> so basically that is the the point of no return. Not that we're going back, but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we, it, it's, it's, it's weekly, it's happening, it's going forwards. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the point that we're getting to when we call launch. Yeah. Um, but we, we started already, really. The church has started. But really we have started already. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We're doing small groups. Yep. You know, we're talking together, we're praying together. Um, so, and the community is growing and yeah. I mean, you said in the book, you know, church is a community on a mission. That's right. And so we're already on that mission. And so, yeah, we're leading up to public gatherings later in the year. Yep. So I'd imagine there's a lot that goes into that. Um, yeah. I guess the first part would just be all the administrative work, right? Right. So the church is a non-for-profit and with that comes a lot of complexity around, legalities and accounting so like walk us through some of that you, you've been you've been working on that in the, in the recent weeks with, with the help of some partners so right so i guess coming from japan um and coming back into australia australia is fairly organized which is really great it is, in yeah. that it <laughs> it's it's much more advanced in terms of non-profits and what they their function is and if we explain what is a non-profit it's i guess in in one sense it's stuff that the government maybe would like to do, but they don't want to do. <laughs> so they're going to ask partners to do, to take care of the, so ask people in the community to yeah. take care of certain things and therefore the government assists those, in, instead of doing it themselves, the government assists yeah. those people to do it, um, fill in the gaps of taking care of people and making sure the community is healthy. So, and really the church fits perfectly into that because that's what we do. Yeah. We do community, we assist mm. in. The church is unique in so many things because we do everything from feeding people who are poor to helping people find accommodation to looking after single parents, um, helping people through um, big decisions in life. We do weddings, we do funerals. Yeah. Um, we look Leadership, after children. We do training. training. And, yeah. The list goes looking on and after on. after people in general. Yeah. Exactly. So we do from like pre-birth all the way to death we take <laughs> care of people yeah that's what the church does and it's an it's huge it's a great think, responsibility it's a huge responsibility yeah. and i think that's why um there is some support and that's why there is the concept of a non-profit in australia yeah and so the non-profit uh, as an entity is now set up yes how'd you find that process um well we had some help um so we have a board um which is um a great group of very experienced um, older than me, men uh, who <laughs> yep. who've just been on this journey, who have been a part of a lot of nonprofits and and churches uh, before, who have kind of walked through that process with me. So if I did it by myself, it would have been absolutely overwhelming. Mm. And <laughs> honestly, just I, I don't think I could have done it without their help. And the board have been have just been so behind this personally, and really wanted to make this work. So. The process has been, I guess, working with the what we call the ATO, 
which is the yep. Australian uh, Tax, tax Office, yeah. office yep. and the ACNC, which yep. is the Australian Charity Charities Reg- Officer, basically, yeah. yeah. Basically, it's a ch- look after charities. Yeah. Exactly. So you get your registered charity. So we yeah. register the charity, which is no small thing. Mm. Uh, we need a constitution of the purpose of this uh, charity, yep. and we can't sway from that. We need to mm. basically stay on mission. Yep. To stay compliant with the government. Yeah. Um, which is exactly what we want to do as a church. Yeah, it's good. Part of our mission is um, basically to roll out or to spread the gospel. And that is not just theologically, that is re- literally the felt effect of the gospel, yep. um, which is restored lives. Yeah. Um, I love so that. I just love that, you know, that's our mission. We tell the government that's our mission. Um, basically to restore lives through the message of Jesus and the practice of Jesus in our lives. And they support that, yeah. which is wonderful. Amazing. So good. Okay. So it's registered. Yes. And we're on mission. What's next? So right now we, we got, there's lots more, I guess, uh, like procedures, policies, legalities to take care of, um, especially around Australia, around uh, working with children. There really is. Um, so it talks about that. Yeah, so we have a system in Australia called the blue card system. People watching may know about that. If you're a teacher or if you work in any any area with children, mm. you need what's called a blue card, which is basically a police background check, which this just makes sure that you are safe, a yep. safe person to work with children. Um, so we have that process. We also have what's called a child protection policy, which okay. is a set of... Um, I guess procedures or values and procedures that make up a the way that we're going to operate when it comes to creating a safe place. You know, it's not just for children. Mm. It's just for people in general. I feel yeah. like church should be the safest place for people in the world. Yeah. It's a, really is a safe place. And it's not about just how do we respond to bad things and negative things happen. And I know that's the stuff that you hear in the news is the bad stuff. Mm. Let alone there's actually millions of amazing things happening yeah. all the time. Yeah. But there is um, bad stuff. It's not just about how we respond to bad stuff. It's also about how do we create an environment that is actually actively, proactively um, contributing towards health mm. and safety for people. So it's a safe place that people can come to and just know that they're going to be cared for and they don't have to be worried. Um, so that would include things like the building being safe, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of work that goes mm-hmm. into that. Um, but also just emotionally, who do you talk to if you have a problem? Mm-hmm. Um, just having clear lines of communication, um, establishing boundaries with people and making sure that people do have boundaries and, and that's protected um, and making sure that our volunteers are taken care of, that we don't, in a sense, abuse or overuse mm. in a sense where we're actually taking, you know, over, crossing boundaries with yep. people's lives when it comes to volunteerism, yeah. which is a wonderful thing to be a volunteer. Yeah, it is. But we want to protect our volunteers and empower them and basically we want it to be a wonderful experience mm. um That's even great. though we we give a lot and we work hard sometimes but we want to make sure it's a great experience and it and, and when we're having you, you know overworked or whatever we, we can have breaks and we can you know make sure that we're taking care of the health of the people in our church including our pastors including our volunteers. So that's really important to us. And we have lots of people around us who are making sure, including um, child safety experts Mm -hmm. who are consulting with us, advising us on just how to make sure that that's done properly. I love that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, church should be a great, safe place for everyone. Yeah. um, Young and old. And um, I imagine it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of paperwork, a lot of training with the team to come up. Um, but it's worth it uh, to get those foundations in place. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a lot of work going to that. Yep. And then there's a whole bunch of, I guess, like a- accounting side. Yeah. Which is which is not necessarily, you know, my background is more on the creative side. It's not on the accounting side. <laughs> so we have some really wonderful people. Um, New Hope Church in Toowoomba has been amazing. Yeah. Um, Pastor Chris and Sue, Sarah Shut and the up. whole team yeah. there have basically helped us 
uh, create a foundation um, for our finance, for our accounting, uh, to make sure that we are, well, number one, compliant with the government, of course, but also just best practice. Yep. Make sure that from the very beginning, we are um, strong in the area of finance and just set up for for many generations to come. So it just needs to be done properly now. And yeah. uh, a fair bit of work goes into doing that. Yeah, that's a huge blessing to be um, working with other churches to put these foundations in place, not doing it on our own. It, um, it really that's amazing. is. Imagine just trying to do it on your own. It would just be uh, a lot of extra work. <laughs> I was on the phone this morning just saying to to, to Chris, um, who, who is also um, part of the team and helping this all roll out, uh, I just don't think I could have done it without the support. Um, and he said, yeah, well, you could, probably could have, but it would have been very painful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's actually a high barrier to entry to starting a church yeah. in Australia. And I feel like that is both a challenge, but also good in that, you know, what we're doing, it's not a small thing. Yeah. We want to do it well. It's a serious thing. Yeah. Yeah. You could do it, you know, uh, I guess on the dodgy, um, but it would, you know, like the house built on the sand, you know, you're going to have problems later on. But we've just been determined from just from day one to really make sure that our church is safe and set up very well for the future. Yeah. So good. Future church. Future church, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's like the administrative side. Yes. And then we'll, we'd be looking at uh, people, right? And that's the next thing is, is putting the right people together, um, well, getting the team together, building the dream team, as you talk about in the book. Yeah. Well, that's the most important thing. I mean, people, it, it, people yeah. is the church, you know, yeah. people in God. So um, that is the main thing. And that's the, that's the most exciting part to me. Um, I mean, I didn't become a pastor so that I can do administration, although it's very <laughs> important. I became a pastor because I love the people and we love working with the people. So uh, the team, building the team is really important to us. This church plan is not about Luke and Izumi. It's definitely not about us. It is about the team. It is about us together. And, of course, we have a position on the team, a, a place of responsibility um, and leadership. But it, but without the team, there is no church. Yeah. So we're just really thankful uh, to those people who have jumped on board and put up their hand to say, yeah, we'll take a risk and be part of starting something from the ground up, which actually is probably one of the most exciting things you could ever do in your life is start something from zero and see it grow up and become a flourishing place. Yeah. I'm excited to be on the team because yeah. I remember the first time seeing you guys go over to Japan uh, when I was back in New Hope Church living in Toowoomba. And just seeing the excitement from everyone coming back from going out and going, coming back from Japan. And um, I think it was Ben Fran said to me, he's like, you've got to be part of a church plant. At one point in your life, every right. Christian, and I think you said it recently to me, you know, every Christian, you know, be part of a church plant. It's exciting. It really um, is. When your faith is right there, it's on the line. It's, it's you know, you're just doing something fresh. It's, you know, you're putting it at risk, you know. It's just yep. so um, exhilarating and so much fun too. It really is. And, and yeah, and you just see this whole new, it just, just deepens your relationship with God. Yeah, It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, a lot of fun memories get created when you're in a space where you have to do things that you don't usually do. <laughs> um, like everyone's doing yeah. a little bit of everything. And it's yeah. just like a lot of fun memories and, and the, the friendships that you build during a church plant. Uh, because you're all out of, everyone's out of their comfort zone, um, <laughs> yeah. but on mission together. And we're all believing so much in, in what we're doing then it, it just does something special in your heart that you'll just never forget. And I think it will give you a heart for outreach and other people that will really stay with you, I think, for the rest of your life. Yeah, definitely. I think even just recently, you know, when I'm at the park or at the cafe, just walking around, you know, meeting people, and I've really been thinking more outwardly about who are these people that I'm encountering every day? How can I create relationships with more people yep. and uh, bring them into this community? It really just does change your... We, we can just get into patterns, right? Of Just right. me, myself, and I focusing on our world, but being part of something new and fresh, bringing it back to the heart of the gospel, which is to get this message out there. Um, I, I love that. It, just being part of a church plant is, is so exciting in that way. Yeah. It really is. It really is. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're still building the team. Yep. Part of that is that we would like to get to a certain, you know, um, scale in the team so that when we do start those weekly Sunday services, um, 
that we we there's no stress. Yeah, many hands make light work. Exactly. The old proverb, so exactly, and yeah. that's that's really what we want. You know, you know, I remember saying to dream team people, like, just look around the room. Mm. This is not all on you. Mm. It's better that we all carry a little than somebody carry it all. Yeah, and if we can just have that perspective as we build, this is not all on me. I'm part of a team, and. Uh, I can't do everything, but I can I can play a part. Yeah. And not have the stress of serving, I think, or the guilt of maybe not serving enough or anything like that. And we can come back to simply the joy of serving God and loving people. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Just asking that question, how can I play my part? Yeah. What can I do? Right. Even if, even if it's just a little bit, what can yeah. I do? Exactly. Yeah. Even as simple as inviting someone. What can, who can I invite to church? It's one of the best things you can do for a church, mate, because literally... You know, if we don't invite people, there's no one there. Yeah. <laughs> so um, to build yeah. a community, you need to invite people. So yeah. that's it's one of the best things you can do. Yeah. So we get a team. We're on mission. The team's growing and expanding. Uh, what's next? I guess we, we're pre- preparing finances, raising funds for right. public gatherings, uh, for a venue, uh, yep. equipment, things like that, right? Yeah. There's actually a lot of things that go into um, funding for a church plant. And I remember back in the day, we would sort of send young people out, like maybe a young couple out and just say, um, you know, give them some, send them some used tea bags and say, just like, <laughs> some just, Lamingtons just and go for it. Hit some veggie mart. You know, just, <laughs> just go and do your best. And there was honestly like a huge failure rate. And you can understand why. Yeah. Um, because if we don't support people when they start mm. and everyone's constantly stressed, like you just think about your household budget. Mm. You know, that when when you don't have finance to be able to do basic things, it's actually quite stressful. It's one yeah. of the biggest stresses in a marriage, right? Yeah. Well, same with the church plant. Like people say, well, can't you just do it for free? Yeah, we can do anything. Like we can just, we can fast for a month. We can do anything's possible. Yeah. But is that the best way to do things? Yeah. Is it sustainable long term? Is that sustainable? Yeah. Is that the model we want to show to the next generation? Is that how we want to be a model to others yeah. in, in the next group of church plants that start? Uh, no. We mm-hmm. would like to be responsible and be able to do things. And really my heart is we want to be able to be generous yeah. with others. You know, Paul talks about this in Galatians. I think it's chapter 5. He says, like, um, be generous and and especially to those in the family of faith. Yeah. Well, I, I want to be able to be generous to our church, mm. to our community. The first responsibility we have as a church is to be is to take care of the people in our church by being generous to them. Okay? Yeah. And then outside of our community, absolutely. But to our community, so um, we are raising funds to be able to be generous. Uh, to be able to do great, to, I want to be generous to our kids. I want to be generous to to you know people at home. You know, watching this, your kids. I want them to come into church and have a generous experience. Yeah, experience generosity. Experience not that. Experience stinginess. Not stinginess. <laughs> no one exactly. Wants to come back to that. <laughs> and it's not just because yeah. we want people to come. It's that I literally want them to experience the goodness of God. Yeah. And God is so generous. Yes. Yeah. And it doesn't take you know piles of money to do that mm. but it does take some yeah and i think that we can do that and do that well and uh, i want the people who come into our community to feel and experience what it is like to to experience the kingdom of god which is generous yeah. so um there's things like equipment um you know you know uh, there's you know, the venue, there's a huge setup costs and setup costs the venue and all that yeah. um administrative yeah. costs obviously that mm. costs money um, so again, there is a barrier to entry, um, and this is not my first time church planting. This is, I think, my sixth time oh, yeah. awesome. church planting, or, um, or you know, overseeing a church plant. So, mm. I guess like through that, we've learnt a lot of lessons, and and we've learnt that you know finance can be one of the most stressful parts mm. of starting something new. But thank you know thank God we're in this season right now. Well, we can actually build strength there so that when we do start weekly gatherings, um, we actually have some buffer, we have some financial principles in place where we can, you know, um, live within our means yep. and still be generous. 
yeah. that we're not striving and stressing constantly. I think one of the most the worst things to to do as a church plan is is to get them say, guys, we really need you giving. Like guys, <laughs> we just we're, we're in yeah. trouble again. Keep the lights on, giving. Um, yeah, yeah. Because it's not inspiring to give to. No. Yeah. And I guess my my first thoughts were, well, are you managing money well then? If that's the yeah. case, constantly. Yeah. I mean, maybe once or twice, but like constantly, you're in trouble. Then maybe something foundationally is wrong. So I guess we're just trying to go back to basics and build something foundationally mm. that is financially um, just set up well, so yeah. that we don't have to stress and and constantly be under pressure to hit budgets. Yeah, it sounds like the recurring th- the theme across all of these things: administrative team and and finances. We we want to set things up well so that we can have sustainable. Uh, success as a church grows because yeah. once you start public gatherings you, you don't want to stop you want to keep going from right. strength to strength and do so in health um, and keep your people not have them burnt out along the way or run out of money along the way so exactly i love that starting strong um and have the resources to be generous from day one right and that in generosity will inspire others to be gen- it's, it's contagious right generosity really is. is contagious yeah you experience it and you just can't help but be part of it so definitely and give on to others so i love that yeah yeah so in the weeks coming up we're going to do this podcast as we roll out stuff we just want to give you guys a bit of a you know i guess um behind the curtain kind of view of what goes into a church plant yeah take you along on some of the yeah. the, the stuff that we're doing share what we're learning share what's working exactly. and what's, maybe what's not, not working, maybe what's working. <laughs> yeah um yeah. interest gathering we have we have one come up on the 28th, 28th of august yeah. 4, 4 p.m. p.m yep um at the house east brisbane in east brisbane it's, yeah um details below yeah <laughs> um, if you are interested and just want to meet the team that's come along or you would like to give into a church plan mm then um, yeah, come along and, and, and meet the team. Um, I think we, we, we'll have food there. We talked about generosity. Yep. We'll have food. We'll have um, you know stuff for kids and uh, there'll be plenty happening. So Yeah, it's going to be great. Come. Well, thanks for joining us on this journey. Yeah. Uh, Road to launch. Yeah, thanks, guys. Bit of a behind-the-scenes theme this season. Definitely. And um, Leave us a comment. Yeah. That would be awesome. What do you want to hear about? Um, what do you want to yep. know what's happening with the, the Road to Launch? Uh, ask us questions. Definitely. And uh, join us on this journey. It's going to be fun. Yeah. If you haven't um, subscribed or rated the podcast, it'd be super helpful if you do. Yeah. Um, wherever you're listening, Spotify, um, iTunes, Apple, Apple, Google Podcasts, YouTube, yeah, whatever. App, YouTube. Please, um, yeah. Give us a give us a shout out. Give us a, a, a rating. Um, yeah. We'd love to hear from you, your feedback as well. So thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. That'd be sweet. Awesome. See you guys. Have, have an amazing week. Yeah.